And look at the spirit versus the flesh in the scriptures. Starting in Romans chapter 8, but we'll be looking at a lot of other scriptures as well. In Romans 8.13 it says, If you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So basically you got two sides. you got life and death under the flesh. you got the spiritual and the carnal is the way the Bible lays it out. Now the word flesh in the scriptures is basically just one word. It's the word in the scriptures is sarx. S-A-R-X for the, the Greek word. Sarx. All that means is, is the living substance that covers a body uh, permeated with blood vessels it's over man or beast, like, just like I drew it there. The flesh of man, the flesh of beast. That's what it's talking about. So when the scriptures speak of living according to the flesh, it can't possibly be meaning that you have to have some kind of mystical existence on earth because we live, continue to live in our mortal bodies, as we'll show you here in the scriptures. It means the passions and the desires of the flesh. Now, in many of the versions of the Bible, like the NIV, for example, they use sinful desire or sinful nature in Romans chapter 7 and 8. They always talk about, if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the sinful nature. See, they, they translate it according to their doctrine, that men are all born with this sinful nature, and that flesh is part of the substance that sin is part of the substance of the flesh. Well, see, it's not. Sin is just the passions and desires of the flesh. That's the way the Greek writers meant it. That's the way Paul was talking about it in Romans 6, 7, and 8 when he referred to these things. So you've got to examine it in that light. So as human beings, then, we exist in a flesh, mortal body, a flesh and bone. We exist in a mortal form, in a mortal body of flesh. It's like the old Lord was created in the likeness of sinful flesh with the same passions and desires as man, as the scripture points out. Our bodies are subject to physical death. We live our daily lives in this body and our perspective towards the world is subject to the desires of our flesh. See, because the innate desires, the natural affections of the flesh, are not necessarily sin, as I'll show you here. See, the flesh has imperfections, infirmities, weaknesses, limited knowledge, and wisdom. So therefore, mistakes to the fleshly mind, the flesh body, are common. Misjudgments, wrong decisions, lack of wisdom. Scripture says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. In, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 15, 50, it says, Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption, where he's talking about the, the new body and the, the, that would be translated. So flesh cannot enter the kingdom. But as long as we live here on earth, we're forced to deal with this mortal body that's full of weaknesses and infirmities. Now, I didn't say sin. I said weaknesses and infirmities. Uh, some of the proof scriptures of that be Romans 7.25. It says, I thank God through Christ Jesus our Lord, so that then with the mind I will serve the law of God, and with the flesh, the law of sin. Meaning the flesh is going to eventually die. And 2 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. See, it's the inward man. The outward man, the mortal body, is perishing day by day, weaker and weaker, more and more infirmed. Eventually we'll see death and corruption. But the spirit is renewed day by day. Now, in regeneration, in the new birth, in the new birth, what happens? See, this is key to understand now. In the new birth, it's the spirit that is renewed. It's like I said in that, that, second, that first, second Corinthians passage, renewed day by day. You don't physically change in substance because sin is not a substance. See, sin is not substance. It's a choice. It's choice. Sin is choice. 
not substance. So you don't physically change when you're regenerated, born again of the Spirit, in a physical sense. The change happens within the heart. The mind in the the mind and the heart are circumcised, crucifying what? The passions and desires of the flesh. See, that's probably where that in principle or provision comes from, that we uh, trust in that provision made by Christ. But see, the reality is that the passions and desires, like Galatians 5.24 says, those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. doesn't mean they drew nails through their hands and whipped themselves with whips. That wouldn't do any good, like, like Colossians says about doing that, about touch not, taste not, handle not. Th those things perish with the using. See, they don't have anything to do with the, the indulgences of the flesh. You have to crucify the passions in the desires, desires of the flesh. That's what these guys are talking about in the scriptures. They're not going to tell you this in your church or your Sunday school class or because you're, you're constantly in that dual nature that you were born with, with these guys. So the person, you remain in your mortal body, but living your life in the flesh, as Paul says. Paul says, uh, Galatians 2.20, Listen to the scripture. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me in the life which I now live in the flesh. Again, his mortal body. He lives in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So see, that's the key. I live this life in the flesh, but with the passions and desires of the flesh crucified in Christ. Uh, Romans 8.11, For if by the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his Spirit who dwells in you. See, if the Spirit of God has regenerated you in the new birth, washed you, regenerated you, like it says in Titus 3, uh, verses 5 and 6, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Christ Jesus our Savior in the process of repentance, when we met the condition of reconciliation with God through repentance. Then we were regenerated, renewed, and washed. The heart was purged, purified. That's the purpose of the reconciliation, to, to be purged, cleared of your wrongdoing, make amends for your ways so that you can set again with God and come into an acceptable state with him. It's not being taught anywhere today in the church. No, nowhere. You come completely in your sins. The old, man, the old man comes into the kingdom. The old man of flesh. He comes into the kingdom. Carnal. Double-minded. Double-minded and divided. That's how, he come in, that's how you come into the kingdom today. And the scriptures declare a double-minded man receives nothing from the Lord. So when James says, James said that in James, in James chapter 1, then he goes on to say, to receive with meekness the implanted word that's able to save your soul, you have to lay aside that double-mindedness, that filthiness and overflow of wickedness, that old carnal man of the flesh. He has to be crucified. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. All who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So this change happens within, like Colossians chapter 2 says, verses 11 and 12. He says, In him you have also been crucified with, you have been circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body and sins of the flesh. See, the passions and desires of the flesh. Not the substance of the flesh, the sins, passions, and desires of the flesh. By the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. There it is, the baptism of repentance. That's what happens in repentance. The clearing, the clearing, the purging, the purification of the heart through the, the spiritual circumcision that takes place and raised to newness of life in Christ. That's what happens. If that hasn't happened, you're still in death. You're still in the old man with the passions and desires of the flesh intact. That's why 
supposed Christians today are addicted to pornography and drugs and sex and divorces and their homes are, are all drunkenness and, and everything else. That's why. That's why. And the preachers don't have a clue what to do about it because all they know is you come to Jesus in your sins and He's going to forgive you for that. So growth in grace then depends completely, completely 100% on you putting to death the passions and desires of your flesh as the Scripture directs you to do because sin is not a substance of your flesh. You weren't born with that inherited from Adam or some gene inside you that makes you want to look at pornography or get drunk or fornicate. No, it's a desire within you that certainly can become second nature like Colossians says, that by nature they're children of wrath. Yeah, it's it, meaning by long practice in repetition they become like that. That's what that word means. Look it up. Because it's used in Romans 2.14, this, by nature the Gentiles do What's contained in the law? Well, how can by nature they do what is contained in the law, and but by nature you're a, you know, you're a depraved sinner? See, it doesn't make sense. You use your use your noggin, as they tell the kids. Understand what these scriptures mean, or you'll be in bondage to this lie 